4.30 now. I got up about 4. I don't think I'm going to be able to ever shake that. <laughs> I just I just seem to click on at 4 o'clock. That's just the deal. But uh, last night when I laid down, uh, when my head hit the pillow, I was out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember anything from that point until when I got up here about a half an hour ago. We had uh, such a blast with the little one for his birthday. Uh, we had this, um, the balloons, we were banging the balloons back and forth here. And, and uh, my wife had that window there closed because she had the little uh, nice stuff she put up for the birthday. But if the balloons got over there, the wind just took them and they would fly outside and they'd go way over there in the neighborhood and fly way up in the air. So <laughs> we were chasing them and uh, some of them would pop. Uh, you know, when they'd hit the ground, they'd pop because of the debris and stuff over there. But, you know, the kids pick it up. Uh, I didn't even have to tell them. They picked, up, they picked up their garbage and all their balloon scraps are in the garbage. So they're not going to be, uh, uh, they're not going to be typical uh, Filipinos that throw their stuff all over the ground. I have noticed here, though, you don't see the garbage around like we did in our old neighborhood. Uh, it's kind of like a class of people. Uh, you see these little stores around here. Nobody's throwing their garbage on the ground. That was that was something we really liked about this area years ago when we were coming here, because we lived in GMA and people would go up and buy something from a sorry sorry store and just throw the wrappers on the ground, even if there was a garbage can sitting right there. So bad mentality. But but uh, the little one had a had a great time. All of us. Uh, they wore my butt out, guys. <laughs> they wore me out. But we went on a big hike and uh, did some exploring over there. You know, Momo, he's starting to get like his brother. He wants to explore and check things out. So uh, we we had a pretty good, pretty good long walk uh, last night. But I uh, was really glad to see when the Baron guy came in the other day, uh, the, the folks over here with the loose dogs, the one that jumps the fence that tore up our garbage, That's uh, that one's all tied up. Uh, and the, the other one was the fellow over here. His first dog got out, and uh, then now it was the other one. So he's got them both tied now. Uh, so I'm really glad that they're not... They're not getting out running around. We, we were out walking the whole time, no poop. Uh, no, you know, we didn't have to do any poop. And then before I went to bed, I did a nice walk, took the flashlight and uh, not really a problem. So I was, I was happy about that. But I had a, a remnant of a dream right when I got up and it was something that happened a long time ago. I, I had forgotten about it, but I thought I would tell you guys about it. Uh, Back when I was a young man, I had a buddy Kevin, and we we just loved to go coon hunting. Uh, he had a dog, and I had a dog. I had I had many dogs actually, but uh, we were going to go out coon hunting this one evening, and we couldn't stay out late. A lot of times I would I would hunt from, you know, on a Friday night or something like that, or if I wasn't working the next day, I'd hunt from six o'clock at night till six in the morning, you know, and, and if we'd have a you know pretty good night. $600 a night we used to call them back in them days that was a lot of money you know that was uh, you know that was a week's pay <laughs> you know one night well we went out and I had this red bull named Ranger and he was a hot tracking dog uh, you know I had other dogs that would take a track that was days old and, and follow it to a coon you know and, and you just run all night well we didn't have the time for anything like that and I never liked to leave my dogs in the woods so we took uh, Ranger, and while we were in the truck going, we were going to hit this, we were down this lonely country road, and we were going to head out to the edge of this little town we knew of uh, by the river. And before we got there, the Ranger started barking in the box in the back of the truck, so, so we pulled over and cut him loose. Kevin didn't lose his dog, I just let Ranger, and Ranger ran about 30 yards straight off the side of the road and started training and when we got over there uh, there are seven coons in the choke cherries uh, they were kind of hanging down from the trees eating the choke cherries so we got the rifle and, and uh, we took five of them and uh, we left the two we left two small ones go and uh, we took five of them 
up. So then we went, we skinned them right there with that many, that many coons. I didn't want to leave them in the back of the truck because the uh, something will, critter will crawl in there and get them. So we skinned them right there, and, and then we took off. Well, as soon as we took off, uh, and we loosed the dogs again, Kevin's dog went straight back, uh, straight back to where them coons were. So we got him though, we, we jumped in the truck, we cut him off and we got him. And then we took a little farther, we went to the other edge of town and sure enough, right off the bat, he was going straight back for them. So we just jumped in the truck and went straight back to where the coons were. And Kevin was a character, he was a red-haired, red-haired Irishman. And uh, so instead of leaving the, the coons on the ground, we stuck them up in the, we stuck them up in the trees. And then of course, uh, you know, they look pretty ghoulish without their hides on them. <laughs> and, uh, Kevin took a cigarette butt that he found along the side of the road and stuck it in one of them's mouth. And then, of course, uh, I had stuff in the truck. And, uh, you know, they got like little hands on them. And I stuck, I stuck mine up on, on one of them on the tree and put some playing cards in his hand. <laughs> and then, of course, found an old sock and made a hat for one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, so we just dressed them up and had them all sitting in this, in the crutches of the trees around the area, and uh, we took off. We felt pretty, thought that was kind of funny, and we took off and didn't get any more coons that night. But uh, we headed home early. Well, it was the, uh, a day later, a day or so later. Uh, Kevin says, R "Run down to run down to town and get the paper." I said, what are, you, what are you talking about? He says, run down, run down and get the, buy the Gazette. And it was a small uh, town newspaper from that area. And, uh, okay, I'm, I said, why don't you just tell me what's in it? He said, no, I can't. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. Go get the paper. So I got up and, and I headed over to the, to the store and I picked up that little Gazette paper, they called it. And on the front page... <laughs> <laughs> it was a picture of these coons in the tree and a big banner that said blood cult in our town and there was a big long article of, uh, you know where they were talking about you know the, the kids going bad and <laughs> murder and critters and all this stuff you know like it was a bad thing I had a big chuckle about that and uh <laughs> you know, they thought it was this big blood cult and, and there was bad things coming into the area. We didn't tell them any better, but uh, I thought that was pretty funny. I actually had saved that uh, newspaper clipping, but then when I got divorced, that all, all that kind of stuff got thrown away, I guess. But uh, that was one thing my buddy Kevin and I, uh, <laughs> we chuckled over that one for years. But uh, not much hunting around here. I used to love to coon hunt. And uh, that would have been one thing I'd love to raise my boys, because uh, you raise them in things like that, and then they're not they're not doing bad things. You get them interested. That's like why I like the guns. You know, I was interested in them from the time I was little. And uh, you know, just just things like that, hunting, camping, fishing, boating. You know, you, you don't get into the bad things. So that's why we have to get them into pretty cool things here. Love the love the motorcycles. We'll probably get them into that. I did see a uh, 49cc dirt bike here. They're not too expensive. I know they're Chinese made, but uh, one thing about that, that, the boy will learn the mechanics. If we buy one that's breaking down all the time, he'll learn the mechanics of it real quick. And uh, I want them to know it. I have plenty of tools here. I want these kids to know. Uh, I teach them what the tools are. and. Uh, they, they know if I tell them to go over to my tool tool pouch, they know which tool to get. Uh, they'll get the right one every time. You know, Phillips standard, large Phillips, small one, you know, uh, uh, side cutters, uh, dikes, uh, you know, linesmen, they know which ones to grab. And they're even learning the sockets, which sockets I got them reading on those. And uh, one thing, if you guys come here, uh, I brought all my tools. I had a beautiful craftsman set, and I had I had about six Billy buy-in boxes that I sent over just with just with tools, heavy as heck. These boxes, and um, it was a waste to bring any of the standard ones. Uh, everything's metric here, and some of the tools I actually bought here uh, when I was at the motorcycle shop are better than anything I have. They have these little tri. You know where they have this little tri points coming out with this, the sizes you need. Uh, you know for working on motorbikes and stuff. 
and uh, those are those are really nice. Uh, I had them at the bike shop, and they work good. Uh, we're hoping to have a motorcycle here pretty soon, and uh, you know, get the kids started. I want to really do a, a search for schools. I've been seeing. I, we went out went out a little bit yesterday, and I saw a, uh, uh, kids coming back from school in there. Uh, like dressed up school clothes like they always had before so there's a school going on somewhere so I told my wife after the first of next month we get done with Moomoo's appointment we're gonna uh, see about getting these kids started in the school Moomoo too I mean the, the kids love it uh, you know we had the tutor for quite a while uh, we did let her go because the neighbor across the street needed one she didn't have the time so we, we let her go because we were going to be leaving anyway and if she would have stayed with us, which she would have, she would have probably lost uh, that guy across the road. So, so we just left her go a little bit early. Uh, we miss her. We I loved what she was teaching the kids. Uh, I still got the whole box of books over there, but but uh, we got to get uh, we got it set. The beginning of next month, we're going to do. We're really going to do an active search to get them in some sort of school and get them going. Uh, they need that. They need structured. I I you know they're. They're never going to say what the damage being done. They're going to say how many we saved because of these this, these mandates that they put on. But they're not saying saying all the other stuff. Uh, and then I saw a thing on uh, Facebook here where somebody wrote on there. I I I wish that uh, people who don't get the vax they just don't treat them in the hospitals if they get it. And then somebody else wrote on there, I wish they'd just shoot him. And the guy who wrote the article came back and said, yeah, I wanted to say that too. Well, what's the matter with you people? You're sick. You're sick in your minds. You know, you want to get the vax, go for it. Get two for all I care. Uh, hide in your houses if you want to. We're, we're not afraid of this This made up thing guys we're, we're just not afraid of it here is there a flu yeah sure uh, you look at the the death counts of flus years past it's always been high people die but this thing that they're doing this is just a made up it's just a made up thing these numbers and all these testing they know the test is faulty you know you look at the, the people coming into the country they got to do a 10 day and then they got to take the test and if they're found with a faulty test positive, then they got to do 14 days. Come on, guys. That's a money grab, and you know it. That's all that is. Why don't they test them the day they get in or before they leave? And then you look at this silliness that goes on in the airport where everybody's distanced all in the airport, and then they're in the plane and they're shoulder to shoulder. How, how ridiculous. Come on, guys. <laughs> Common sense. What happened? What happened? A year of, a year of this propaganda that we've been blasted with and your brains just died? Give me a break. And then I saw another real funny one that somebody took a picture of was in an elevator where they had little squares you had to stand on inside an elevator. Give me a break, guys. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been talking about this baloney for well over a year. And it's time to put this stuff to bed. You know, just be done with it. And, it, you know, I don't understand the, the people who get the vax saying, I have to get one, or I have to still wear a mask. You know what you're telling me? You're telling me that vax don't work. You don't trust that vax. You don't think it works. That's what you're saying. Because if it's so such a wonderful thing, and people got flu shots in the world, they didn't worry about it. They went, they went to work. People in the hospital went to work, treated people with the flu. They didn't. But your vax that you're getting now doesn't work. You're saying that by the way you're signaling the things you're doing, because you're wanting everyone else to get one or wear a mask. Well, wait a minute. If if you've got this vax, I thought this protected you. You're covered. That tells me it's more. It's it's something else. So uh, I'm just I'm still not buying any of this stuff. Uh, now they're doing money grabs on the poor people. You know they're gonna. It seems like they're gonna just go haul haul out. I heard some things that uh, the top government official here said. And it's ju it's just scary what's going on. And uh, I don't know what information they're getting uh, on this thing, but. You know, if you, if you look at the flu season, and this is a, lo a very long flu season, over a year, 
uh, the numbers aren't really that high and uh, you know the people that got it why would they ever have to have a vaccine there's top virologists all over the world coming out and speaking out which they're uh, they're hiding what they're saying they're they're censoring them and not letting them letting their news get out well that tells me that's a red flag right there too guys uh, you know and then the news media with all the all the crap they're pulling there's red flags all over the place and there's been many many since the beginning of all this and uh, you know I, I even talked to some people that are pretty smart that I always thought were pretty bright and they're getting duped into this also the fear it's just like they said back in the 30s that big guy that started with a H and ended with a lure uh, and his his minions that he had working for him said uh, you can control people so easily with fear and uh, it's true and that's exactly what they did they played this they played this uh, and all you, you folks like a fiddle and a lot of people will jump on me and say oh yeah you're just so full of crap but no I don't want these beautiful little babies getting a shot that can kill them uh, I didn't never wanted them getting shots uh, I don't buy that they're they're that great you know, we got the polio and uh, the different things like that but uh, you know all these shots they want to give them I'm not I'm not into all that uh, I remember when I was little you got a couple shots and you were done now they want them to get I don't know 60 or 70 of the damn things it's just a money thing for these uh, shot making companies They're, they I think what's happening in the military industrial complex is going to slowly fade out and it's going to be the pharmaceutical industrial complex taking over big money forcing you into getting these things and trying to make it mandatory guys that's communism uh, if, if you don't wake up and smell the coffee guys you're going to be drowned in it before you know it and then they've, they've got even not just the government officials saying it but they're getting your neighbor saying you have to get it too or we want you dead what's the matter with you people gosh you know if I want to do something I, fine leave me alone let me do my thing just like I want to leave you alone do your thing I don't care you want to buy a red car and I want a white car fine that's great but don't tell me I have to do what you do. Don't tell me I got to drive a red car like you. Just don't. And it seems like that's the way people are going. They're turning red. So it's very sad. They, they, I remember McCarthy called it way back in the in the fifties. And then look at look at this. <laughs> here we are, guys. It took a long time, but here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. And. Uh, I want you all take care, pray for each other, pray to the good Lord, because, uh, you know, fighting against Satan, we, we can't do it. We have to have him he put the armor on us, and he has to do the fighting for us, because we can't, we lose. It's just all there is to it. So, uh, you know, don't forget to drop your knees and pray to the good Lord and ask him for help in this terrible thing that's going on. And, uh, you know, will it be, will it be time for uh, our good Lord Jesus to come back? could be you know there's a lot of the signs are there watch what they're doing in the temple what's happening in israel it's it's all it's all written down and uh, don't fall for these people who try to say this in the bible's not true and they're trying to divide you it's what they're doing now with these these vaxes they're trying to divide us all because divide and conquer that's a super good strategy it works it always has so be careful guys pray for each other and uh and don't let up every day. This is Rick Shaw.